Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week we're looking at four essential ear training tips for taking your bass playing to the next level. Now, first of all, what is all this ear training stuff? Well, ear training is a way of developing our ability to work out and then play or write any music we hear. This can be external music that we hear on a recording or played live by a musician, or it can be the internal music that we hear in our head. And the ultimate aim is to be able to freely express whatever music we want on the instrument, and in that sense, we're literally learning to talk through the instrument. So it's obviously a huge area of study, and it can literally fill several lifetimes of practice. But there are a few little tips that I can give you to help set you off in the right direction. Now, at first, you might hear about ear training and have no idea where to even start. I know that was a big problem for me, and, and you know, I knew it'd help because I saw the way that some players could just pick out bass lines and fills and solos, you know, do that instantly, sometimes with no bass in the hand. They'd just tell me the notes from hearing something once, and I just couldn't understand how you could get from where I was as an okay bass player all the way to that level. But like everything, there is a process and a way of getting to that level. You just need to take the correct steps. So tip number one is simply listen. Listen to music. Now, you're watching a bass video, which probably means that you're a bass player, which probably means that you enjoy music, probably. So you probably listen to a lot of music, but in developing your ear, it's important to listen to a lot of music in a lot of different styles. You might be really into one particular band or one particular style of music, you know, that you listen to most of the time. So try diversifying. Listen to as many styles as you can and try to listen analytically. By analytically, I mean listen to everything that's happening in there. What's the instrumentation? Try to hear the individual instruments and focus on them in isolation. What's the chord? What's that line? What scale is that? Be an active listener rather than a passive listener. It's easy to switch off and just let music wash over you, which is great, but if you want to develop your ear, you need to start paying attention. Now in the ear training course over at Talking Bass, I have a lesson devoted to this skill where we listen to a piece of music and we gradually pick it apart, isolating each instrument. There's an extract from that lesson that I released on YouTube, which I'll link to in the info below if you want some practice in that area. One other important reason for diversifying your listening habits is that it diversifies your playing. I get lots of people asking me about learning jazz and especially walking bass lines, but often those players have never listened to jazz. It's just something that they feel like they have to learn to be maybe as good as they can be or even just to get some gigs, and that's fine. But really the only way to learn to play in different styles is to listen to those styles. I'm pretty sure that a Cannibal Corpse fan would find it pretty laughable if a complete jazz player approached them and asked them for tips on playing death metal and then revealed that they didn't listen to it, didn't like it, and, you know, were probably never going to listen to it. You know, it's pretty much the same thing. Tip number two is to transcribe. Now, this is usually the go-to tip that people always give, and there's no getting around it, and there's no shortcut. Just spend as much time as possible working out music from recordings by ear. At first, it can seem really tricky because, you know, hearing a bass line can be tough, especially if you're listening on the wrong equipment. But again, I expand on this massively in the ear training course, so just see that link in the info below if you really want to practice that skill. To help with developing your transcription skills, I definitely advise you to transcribe stuff other than bass. Learn vocal melodies, guitar melodies, sax melodies, chord progressions, learn anything that you hear. Most other instruments are easier to hear, so it can make the transcription process a lot easier, but you still get the benefit of working on your ear. Tip number three is sing what you play. Now this is a great tip, but it's a tip that people often hate because it can be really embarrassing at first. Now don't worry, you don't have to be singing sol phase like do re mi fa so la ti do ti la so fa mi re do do mi so do so mi do, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can make any kind of noises that you want, you know, Ba 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 <laughs> Whatever type of noises you want to be making, as long as you're recreating the pictures that are there on the bass. The idea is that we're bridging that connection between the instrument and our musical mind. In learning to sing along with what you play, yes, it can be useful to learn the technical stuff like scales and arpeggios and intervals and all those kind of things, but it can actually be a lot easier when you start out just learning bass lines and riffs. You know, so you could start with something really simple like It's dead simple. 
move on to something a little bit more busy like a fill bam, ba -da -da -da, bam, bam, you know stuff like that until you eventually move into more kind of soloistic lines so you might have something like you know the aim is to literally be able to talk through the instrument and it takes time and it can be a little bit weird at first but trust me it will really help with developing your ear and your overall kind of musical perception and again I use this as one of the key methods in teaching the lessons over at the ear training course so again if you want anything to do with that just check the info below. Now, obviously, you don't have to do this all the time. You don't have to be singing bass lines in all your band rehearsals. But over time, you'll gain a lot more confidence and you'll probably find yourself singing along to your lines, especially when you're trying to nail something a little bit tricky or describing a line to someone else. Now, if you want to hear this kind of playing in action, George Benson is an obvious guy to listen to. But on the bass side of things, I'd definitely check out Richard Bonner and Yannick Guzdala. Both guys are unbelievable players that have a really deep and strong connection to the playing through the voice. And even though you obviously don't have to go down the jazz solo road like they do, it's just an example of how far you can take it. Finally, tip number four is simply make music. Be creative, make up riffs, make up lines, make up fills, experiment and play. Now, this probably sounds like really obvious advice in terms of learning how to play in general, but it's absolutely essential in developing your ear. The more you just experiment on the instrument and play around, the more you'll organically start to associate the sounds that you're creating to the notes that you're playing, the patterns that you're seeing, and the things that you're feeling. It's all a part of the same thing. It's just making music. One good analogy would be to see all of the musical notes, and maybe even just the bass fingerboard, as a kind of wilderness. You've been stranded on maybe an island, you have no map, and you don't know where anything is. You set up camp near water, there's a bit of fruit maybe to eat, and it all seems safe. It's familiar and you know where everything is. But, eventually, over time, you want to venture a little further afield. You know, <laughs> you're getting sick of eating berries. So you go on a little expedition away from the camp, but you stray a little bit too far and you get lost pretty quickly. And, you know, you've got a hell of a time getting back to your familiar safe camp. From that point on, you get a little anxious about exploring because it's easy to make such a mistake. So you start to map it out little by little and when you do that you find that that familiar territory gets larger and larger until you know the whole island like the back of your hand. So does that sound familiar? You know we spend loads of time sticking to stuff that we know because it's safe and we know how it sounds. It's only through exploring and experimentation that we can expand that zone of familiarity and feel confident in playing around the instrument. Now, obviously, this can apply to many different areas of playing, music, and even life in general, but it's especially useful in creatively developing our ear. At first, you might make up a riff that sounds very much like one that you've already learned. You'll be sticking to the sounds that you know, but as you experiment, adding other notes in there, just playing around with them so you can hear them over and over, those notes that were once alien to you will eventually become good friends. And if you combine that with the other tips of transcribing and singing what you, know, singing what you play, you'll eventually start to develop your ear and musical vocabulary. So that's just four simple steps that should help set you on the right path to developing your ear. As I mentioned before, I've created the Ear Training for Bass course over at TalkingBass.net that works in really, really simple steps right from the absolute basics of hearing a single pitch through to hearing melodies, bass lines, chord qualities and progressions. So if this has whet your appetite and you want to start developing your ear, I definitely recommend taking a look at that. Just click on the link in the info below. Okay, I'll see you later.